um, this next uh, development standards committee meeting. Can we start the live stream? Thank you very much. OK, first of all, um, Sarah, are there any apologies for absence? Yes, convener, I have an apology from Councillor Stewart. Thank you. Um, and does any member have any wish to um, to say any declarations of interest? I'm not seeing any hands, so I'll take that as read as no declarations of interest. Um, agenda item three is regarding to building warrants. The committee is asked to note that during the period 3rd September to 7th of October 2022, a total of 60 building warrants 12 demolition warrants and 28 amendments to warrant have been approved with an estimated cost of £6,445,550. Um, is that noted? Noted. Um, under agenda item, I, I say as well, the uh, approval warrants have been sent to every member. Um, agenda item four under delegated decisions, the committee is asked to note again during the same period, 3rd September, to 7th October 2022, a total of 63 planning applications have been approved and four refused under the scheme of delegation to officers. And again, every member has been sent a list of these. Again, is that noted? Noted. noted. Very much. OK, the agenda item five is the minutes of the last meeting of the 13th September 2022. Um, are these Agreed. And is any particular point anybody wants to bring up on the minutes? If not, again, are these noted? Noted. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll head on. We have some speakers today, um, but not agenda item six. I think Mr. Taylor will can kick off with yourself for the um, report three three six twenty two land at Coody Farm or Burlet Road, West Arbroath. Thank you, Vera, and good morning, members. I'll just share my screen. Okay, the slides. Um, so item six is, is an application for planning permission for a residential development of 146 houses with associated infrastructure on land at Coody Farm at Billet Road West at Broth. The application site is located within the development boundary and um, to the west side it's located on the west side of, of our billet road west and to the north of the hospital field residential um, just in the approximate position of the, the dashed red line so the site is within the development boundary and is within an area which is identified as the long-term housing growth area for our growth and um, within that the local development plan indicates that an area around about five hectares is allocated for residential development in the period 2021 to 2026 and future phases of future local development plans. But in this first phase, the development plan envisages about 120 dwellings on the site and it requires development proposals to be in accordance with a detailed development brief, which was um, fairly recently approved by a committee, I think in 2019. And I'll go through subsequent phases. The other relevant background factor at this stage is the, the, the findings of the 2022 uh, housing land order, which is currently in draft form. But importantly, that housing land order identifies there is a shortfall in, in the housing land supply provision in, in the East Angus housing market area. So we're, we're looking at an application on a site which is identified for around 120 dwellings. There's around, around uh, the suitability of the numbers is dependent on this quality of the design. But the other um, background factor is we have a housing land supply shortfall. So the number of units proposed at 146 units would help to work towards addressing that shortfall. And in some stances where there is a shortfall, the local development plan seeks for that to be delivered on other sites within the development boundaries, including bringing forward sites um, which are uh, seen as, as later phases of the plan. So the principle of housing development on this site is well established by the local development plan. The number of units is considered to be acceptable um, and the principle of residential development of the site and the number of units is, is in accordance with, with policies of the plan. As I say, subsequent slides, I'll go through the details of, of what the proposal involves. So this is a pictometry image. Uh, at this stage, I would draw members' 
attention to the position of the site, which is shown by the, the, the dashed red line, and the position of Muirfield Primary School, which is located to the south of the edge of that structure, just down at the bottom of the picture. So that's Muirfield Primary School, and residential development was identified in this part of our growth, was that school was recently they renewed so allocating housing land in this location which is reasonably accessible for services and for education facilities um, as i say that was one of the drivers for allocating this area for residential development i'd also draw members attention to um the the donkey park i think it's known as locally um, members will correct me if i'm wrong on that but that that park was recently uh, improved with new play equipment provided as part of a council housing development in that location it's understood that's now been completed including the, the upgrades to the park so the site is currently in quality land but the development plan envisages um uh, residential development on the site so the loss of prime quality land is is something which is in accordance with the development plan strategy the access points to the site are shown by the approximate position of the two blue stars and um, two vehicular accesses will be provided into the site which then link into would be future phases of development and um, so 143 of the 146 units would be accessed from these two new accesses three units would be formed on timber green to the south of the site and that would just be an extension of the existing row of houses on the north side just into the approximate position of my cursor here so the development brief has uh, it's looking for development to to address in terms of access and connectivity the application has been supported by a transport assessment and that assessment has been uh, ca carried out to a methodology which is agreed by the road service but what uh, what it identifies is that the existing road network within uh, the surrounding area can accommodate development within the site without any with any modif without any modification or mitigation required the development would incorporate a widened um, three metre wide cycleway along the uh, our billet road west site frontage and um, there would be two vehicular access points within the development and the development would have a, a principal access point to the south which would be formed through a tree line boulevard which is one of the things which is identified as important for this phase of development in the development brief in addition to the vehicular access point connectivity routes through the site so there's a choice of different routes to connect from the development into existing development at the east um, onto um, public transport facilities located on our build west and fairly convenient for uh, connections on westway which is further to the southeast uh, the other the other valuable point within the development is it has good pedestrian connectivity to the primary school to the south so a path located through the central part of the site coming to the south which allows easy access for pedestrians to access the moving on to drainage and um, the the houses would connect to the public sewer and has offered no objection to that proposed arrangement the sustainable drainage system um, would be provided for surface water that is located in the southwest corner of the site which is the location envisaged by the development brief it's been designed to take account of uh, climate change so it has a, a 30 percent uplift in surface water for climate change and the road service and sepa are both satisfied with the proposal in terms of its impacts in terms of flooding and drainage the information submitted in support of the application indicates that the suds area will be planted planted up so that it's suitable for biodiversity enhancement. There would be suitable wetland uh, mix of grasses and native planting in the area surrounding surrounding the suds infrastructure. In terms of landscaping and open space, I think the development plan requirement is for around 8,700 square meters of public open space. And the applicant has identified that the development would provide around about 1.6 hectares of open space which is obviously significantly in excess of the minimum standard that open space would be planted up with native planting and it's located in the position visited by the development brief which would Im involve a green corridor along our billet road west an area of public open space which is subject to overlooking from the public elevations of houses <clears throat> excuse me there would be smaller pockets of open space um, between the housing groups and a multifunctional open space on the west side of the site which could be extended as part of future development phases in terms of affordable housing and um, the application would involve the delivery of 36 new affordable houses and they will be provided through uh, the provision of one two three and four bedroom units those houses will be located in the southern part of the site in the approximate position that my cursor is showing 
In terms of phasing and developer contributions, the final part of, of what the brief uh, addresses, the applicant has indicated the phasing of the site would, would secure the delivery of affordable housing in an early phase of development, but a planning condition is proposed to, to secure precise details or development phasing. In terms of developer contributions, uh, the Council obviously has an adopted supplementary guidance which sets out where developer contributions are required in this area. What it says is there is a requirement for contributions towards our growth high school and towards in terms of Abroth High School, um, the education service has indicated that there is adequate capacity within the high school to accommodate the development proposed. I think the current school role is around about 200 kids short of its capacity and the development of this nature is it's expected to generate around about 30 kids. So uh, the, the education has ample capacity in the, in the high school to accommodate kids associated with the development. They have no plans to extend that school and on that basis it's not concerned considered necessary or reasonable to require developer contribution towards the high school, but um, a planning obligation is proposed requiring contributions towards affordable housing and, uh, and towards a growth sports centre. So this is just an extract from the development brief just to, just to reassure members that, that the development would deliver the intentions and the aspirations of that brief. So the first phase of development is in the approximate position shown in phase one in the brief. You can see on the west side of our Billet Road West a green corridor and that will be provided in the development as would uh, a tree-lined boulevard extended into future phases uh, in the approximate position of my cursor. So uh, within the development brief is in the position shown in the approved, uh, sorry, in the submitted and the smaller extract plan on the right hand side is just intent is just intent it's just in what might relate to a future development phase so the development we're looking at today uh, really coexists with a future uh, extension of the site as as subsequent phases come forward as part of a, a new local development plan in the future so this uh, sense of of the the the, the housing streets that would be provided and the top two show the the road frontage along our billet road west so the houses uh, set back behind an area of open space and um, the houses would have public faces which address that open space to make that to use the central two um, sections are shown uh, along the frontage of the central tree line boulevard that would be provided through the site and the bottom two to show um, the, the the road frontage along the westerly most road uh, through the site this is just a three house designs and um, they're very similar to the house designs which are being constructed on the guide dog site in Forfa. Um, planning conditions are proposed to secure appropriate external material finishes but the designs are generally considered to be acceptable um, uh, and that the layouts of houses are designed so that, that the houses overlook streets and open spaces to make sure that it's a safe and pleasant residential environment for, for, for would-be occupants. I just have a couple of photographs of the site um, um, I think the, the, the pictometry images probably illustrate the site better than anything else. But this is taken from Timber Greens, which is located at the south of the site, looking west. You'll see on the right hand side of the slide, there is a, a slightly wider carriageway than the part to the west and the footway. And that is a requirement of planning conditions that are proposed to extend the carriageway width to, to extend the footway along the frontage of the site. And three additional single storey houses will be added to the end of this street. Um, on the uh, in the background there you see the position of a tree and um, just in front of that is an access to the primary school and the development includes good pedestrian linkages to, to tie into that to to encourage um, uh, sustainable means of transport encourage people to walk rather than use use their cars this photograph is taken looking along uh, the, the footway we see on on the, the left hand side of the the photograph that will be extended to form a three meter wide cycleway beyond that to its right hand side would be an open space area and then houses beyond that overlooking that open space area so that would create quite a pleasant environment along a billet road west it would pick out some of the existing features and replicate that so you have some houses set back here with green space and trees and it's, it's intended to just replicate that type of feel along our billet road west which should make it a pleasant place not only for for those residents uh, that would live in the development but also for those people that already live on on that part or in that part of our growth the suds area would be at the low point of the site which is in the approximate position of the, the dip in the field in this location here as i say that is an area which is identified for suds in in the approved development brief and the primary school is just to the rear of of the trees you see in the background this is a pictometry image again i won't dwell on this for too long 
but it just shows the position of the primary school. There would be good connections through the site for kids uh, to get to the primary school in a safe fashion. Um, the, the the road frontage along the site would have a green corridor, which again makes that quite a pleasant environment for the area as well as those within the development. So in summary, the application site is, is allocated for residential development uh, in the local development plan. Um, the development would help to address an identified shortfall in the, in the East Angus housing market area, and the development is consistent with, with the principles of sustainable development set out in Scottish planning policy. The detailed design solution is considered to meet the aims of the development brief and is compatible, compatible with Council of Design guidance. The application has attracted 20 representations, 18 of which raise objections, and the matters raised in objection are addressed in, in the report before members. Uh, there are no consultee objections to the application. It's considered adverse impacts can be mitigated, including those through the construction process with limits on noise, vibration, and require an agreement in the location of construction compounds within the site, just to ensure that impacts on existing residents are, are, are considered during the construction process. As I say, the application is considered to comply with policy and on that basis is recommended for approval. For that, um, can we just start off with um, any, if any members have any questions uh, for Mr Taylor at this point? I have a couple, I'll let everybody else Convener, ap Apologies for interrupting. Can I just submit an apology from Councillor Nicholl? Unfortunately, he's having IT difficulties this morning and he just can't access the meeting. So he okay. submits his apologies. Thank Thanks. you. That's noted, thank you. Um, okay, we'll kick off. Uh, Councillor Fairweather, would like to start? Yeah, right. Th thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, just in, right. I've got two or three questions actually. Obviously, there were twenty representations. Um, so I'm just basically wanting clarity for right, right, right for these. Um, I, I was looking at page sixty-eight, and that's the landscaping. Oh, right. Obviously, we're going to have rest. David. So obviously, okay. we're... Well, it's just me. Oh. Are we okay for me to go on? So I'll carry on, yeah. I'm not sure who froze whether it was me or you there, but I but uh, carry on, David. Sorry. Right. No worries, no worries. Um obviously right, we've got residents in the area, especially Kinghorn Street and Timber uh, and Timber Greens. Um that uh, and I know um they're, they're uh, losing your um uh, your your landscape and right and your view isn't it a material consideration for planning. Um, but obviously, people are wor right worried. They've, right, they've had uh, an open view for many, many years. I stayed up there right, right, when I, right when I was a young lad, so that's over 50 years ago. So that field's been there all that time. Um, so the, the landscaping is going to be very, very important. So just for clarification, for the landscaping at Kinghorn Street, um, Timber Greens and the Birlet Road West, um, right? can we get clarity what type of planting that's going to be? Um, that's my first question. So, Mr. Taylor, maybe you want to go to that one first. Thank you, Councillor Fairweather. Sure. Um, so, planning the thrust of planning policy is to ensure that landscaping is done in a way where it enhances biodiversity. So, what we'll be looking for is is native trees and um, fruit trees because that obviously has positive impacts for nature, which is what we're looking to achieve in terms of development plan policy. And um, what I would say is, is the applicants um, quite helpfully provided open space in the areas close to, to existing housing. So while, as you said yourself, loss of view is not a material planning consideration, the development has been designed in a way where there's space standards around existing houses. The applicant has proposed single storey housing adjacent to the houses on Timber Greens, which again reduces amenity impacts. Those houses in the hospital field area are set back um, from new houses proposed by landscape and similarly are built at rest. Um, we've not got houses hard on our billet road west. We've set them back with via landscaping. So I think in terms of amenity, um, the, the development has been designed well to protect people's amenity as far as it can. But as you suggest, uh, the amenity, th there will be a change. Uh, we're going to have houses built in this field or potentially that's that's where we've allocated housing land. So there will be a change. But we think that change has been proposed in a manner which um, wouldn't unacceptably impact on the amenity of those that live in the existing area. I must say I tend to agree. I mean, it's been done very simply, uh, and uh, I, I must uh, congratulate the officers and the, right, the applicants for, right, what, for what they've done. Um, going on, obviously, there, right, there's education concerns, um, uh, and it's the school right, 
uh, capacity. I noticed that one, the phases one, two, and three, they, there didn't seem to be much of a problem. But after that, four and five, yes, there could be. Could we address that, please? Yeah, thanks again, uh, Councillor Fair. With it, so so the land use allocation we have for the site obviously is only for 120 houses now. Um, now the future local development plans will identify additional housing land um, and what's required to accommodate that. So if there is a requirement in the future for uh, contributions to uh, improve education infrastructure, whether it be primary school or secondary school, that will be identified through um, supplementary guidance relating to developer contributions and through any land allocation uh, in the future of the site. But that all will have to be sort of worked through when we decide in how much housing land needs to be identified and, and at what time period it can come forward and that will also take account of other housing sites that have come on stream and how that's affected the capacity of the school over time. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thanks, Mr Taylor. Right, one, there was also a concern regarding our Burlet Road West. Um, all right, obviously, um, the, the speed of the road, uh, I believe it's still 30 miles an hour at this present time. I may be wrong. Um, but right, would we be looking perhaps to reduce the speed on that road to 20 miles an hour? So the, the, that is not something which is um, suggested as necessary in the transport assessment or in the, the road service comments on the proposal but that obviously doesn't prevent us as a council changing speed limits as and when we see fit so that isn't necessarily a requirement for a, through the planning process but obviously that is something that the, the council can can address so going forward okay that's fine that's me thanks very much mr taylor okay thanks councillor fairbrother and uh, councillor donnell thanks convener um mr taylor i am I um, actually am a wee bit worried about the cosmetics outside of the houses. Um, you know, 300, 300 houses in the end. Are the outside faces of all these houses going to be black in colour? Because people are spending a lot of money on houses nowadays and they want them to be individual. And obviously round about there we'll have... Um, the hospital field area and we'll have the Timmy Greens area which have got lighter cladding and it's going to be in a field that obviously is in a rural location and the black and white is quite dominant and I really don't want this um, new housing development to look a wee bit barrack like we want it to be a softer um, you know in, in that aspect with, the, with it being uh, in the context of the villages etc um, is is that set in stone that all these houses are going to look like we're black and white clad and it's or is that just a picture that's been put up just to get the picture? So, so the, the the design scheme proposed is for a sort of light render and a, and a sort of um, grey cladding. But one of the things I, I touched upon in the presentation, um, and you'll see in the report, is external material finishes. We're yeah. proposing a planning condition around that. So there is an opportunity for us to secure external material finishes for the houses, which are perhaps um, more recessive in tone and yeah. perhaps more in keeping with our growth and cladding. But as I say, a, a planning condition is proposed so we can secure something which is which is appropriate for this area, having regard to other houses and developments. I think if we could do that, that would be great. I would just like, I wouldn't like to see it whole field full of houses like that you know we need to we need a wee bit of diversity in in, in the buildings etc thank you for that yeah thanks Kirsten. i think we've got the the applicants and their agents on the call we'll be hearing from them shortly and it may be something they could address when when they address the meeting um okay thanks councillor no um councillor Dorn. Hi, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask around some questions around the energy efficiency and low carbon um, of this uh, proposed uh, application and um, particularly around if you could expand a little bit more on the situation with the heat pumps that's noted as a condition as well. Um, I'm particularly interested in because it is noted as a condition that um, heat pumps that have the um, aren't as noisy as I understand it would be what's what what would be asked for um, and I just want to make sure that that would mean that there are still heat pumps being installed and it doesn't then mean that there aren't heat pumps happening because I think it's a good proposal. Uh, thank you Councillor Don. thanks for your question. Um, so the application is supported by a energy statement and it identifies a number of measures that the applicant proposes to reduce um, the, the sort of uh, the, the carbon impact of the development. 
In terms directly about air source heat pumps, it's understood that the, the proposal is for air source heat pumps to be provided in the affordable housing area and planning policy is supportive of that type of development. So what we're trying to do with the conditions is just ensure that we have information from the applicant that says those heat pumps can be provided, which obviously would be potentially 36 heat pumps in close proximity to each other. Um, just to ensure those heat pumps are provided in a manner where they don't give rise to unacceptable noise impacts. So, um, uh, so, so that that that's that that deals with that part. There are other measures within the development which are intended to get consumption. So, I think the houses have solar panels shown on roofs, and um, they're, they're designed in a way where they are future proof to make easy connection to things like um, electrical infrastructure for charging points to be installed in houses. Um, but I think that the most important part about sustainability is that the, the houses are proposed in an area where there is public transport and um, where there are good connections to existing services. And because we put if we put houses in the right place, it reduces people or people's requirements to use the private car. So that's probably slightly more fundamental. But that, you know, the applicants given us an energy statement, high insulation, solar panels, air salt, heat pumps, a number of measures to ensure that the carbon footprint of the development is reduced. OK, thank you. And I just had one uh, follow up on what you mentioned in terms of the um, the phasing of this phase and how it would be built relating to um, uh, building the affordable housing first. So just to confirm your weight, you're asking for clarification on that phasing from the from the developer, correct? Yes, a planning condition is proposed requiring agreement over development phasing, but um, just in, in informal discussions with the applicant, they've indicated that they envisage the affordable housing being delivered in an early phase of development. So that's generally a, a positive thing. Um, but as I say, a planning condition is, is proposed to, to secure that information. OK, thanks. Yeah, that's something that I would want to see, that that would be um, built first. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Dorn. Uh, Councillor Duff? Yeah, thanks, convener, and, and thanks to Mr. Taylor for for his uh, report so far. Just, just I, I'm not that familiar with the development plan in our broth. So, just to, to to clarify, this is phase one, which is part of the current development plan. Are the other phases, which are on the slide on page sixty nine, are they not at the moment in the development plan? Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, absolutely, Councillor Duff. So um, what we've identified that the overall site as a long-term housing growth area, but what we've said in the local development plan is in the period 2021 to 2026, we see the site coming forward for a number uh, for a, for a number of houses around 120. As I said, this is slightly more than a number, uh, 120 that's proposed, um, but we have a housing land supply shortfall. So having an extra um, sort of 26 houses over and above that just helps us to address that shortfall. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the that's what I thought. But thank, thank you. Okay, that's bit. Just if I could follow up, um, Mr. Taylor, with a couple of questions on my own here. Um, the the financial contribution earlier says there's no developer contribution to the schools, but there's it looks like there's going to be financial con contributions to our both sports centre. So that's a new one to me. I've never heard that before, and I'm guessing. On the numbers when we take out the um other houses that could be that could be about 120 houses would that be would that be right at 745 pounds per house is that correct that's right it, it's, it'll be a contribution from the mainstream houses um so i think that is let me check my notes i think that was um yes just over 100 houses um 110 houses times the the contribution which i think is would have to increase because of indexation but i think it's set for around about 750 pounds per unit at the moment so yeah. so it's just a new one for me even though after my you know few years i've been now on development standards i've never heard of a financial contribution to a sports center compared to when we'd be giving you know uh, developer contribution to schools so can you just give me a little bit of background to that why that comes in yeah, so um, when the, the affordable housing supplement and, and developer contribution supplementary guidance has been produced, we've obviously gone out and consulted on to various service providers to, to, to establish what, what requirements are, are there in their area to accommodate additional uh, residents. And consultations have obviously identified that our broad sports centre requires improvement to accommodate additional folk. Um, so it, it's really as simple as that. Uh, as part of that consultation, it's identified a need to um, provide services to for, for the people generated by the development. OK, um, thanks very much for that. That makes it clear. Um, like Councillor Fairweather, I've noted the, you know, a number of objections to this, but 
Um, there was a few things there. We, we, I think we dealt with the schools. Um, traffic was one part, and you know, as well, which we, we hear all the time on any new application. But on another thing came was flooding and drainage. Is there much history of flooding and drainage at this part of our growth? So certainly not that I'm aware. I mean, the the SEPA flood maps do not identify this site as being an area which is subject to flood risk. Um, but the application is supported by both drainage assessment and flood risk assessment, and those assessments have been considered by both our colleagues in the road service and SEPA. Both parties have indicated that the drainage uh, arrangements for the development are accepted and there's no reason subject to the mitigations identified in the flood risk assessment that this would either be a development which would flood itself or would make flood issues uh, elsewhere or with the site worse. So from that perspective, it's been considered by relevant parties and that's not considered to be an issue. Okay, um, thanks Thanks for that. Um, I have another question, but I think I might address okay, the agent. Okay, um, there's no other questions for, the, um, for Mr Taylor. We'll move on to speakers. Now we have... Um, I think it's both Leslie Lindsay and Martin Forbes of Scotia Homes who are the applicants on the on the call today, and also John Buchan, um, the applicants agent from MGA Architecture. Mr. Forbes or Miss Lindsay, do you wish to address the uh, committee this morning, or are you looking more just for questions to be um, posted? I think we're just here um, mainly to address any questions specifically that you might have. I think Ed's done quite a good job and giving you a kind of thorough summary um, of our development proposal so I don't think we have anything specifically to add other than perhaps the material palette question I think um, that was raised just by yourself Councillor Adorno. Um, so we have been in discussions with the planner on the material palette just for the last couple of months um, and it's likely we'll, we'll move away from timber cladding and we're proposing brick which obviously planning is supportive of being um, much more in keeping with the area of our growth. Um, but as uh, Taylor um, pointed out, it will be a planning condition. So we'll be working with them over the next couple of months to confirm what the materials would be and come to agreement on that. But um, it is likely it will be brick. OK, we've moved. To, uh, so if you're happy, then, um, uh, Ms Lindsay and Mr Butter, to, to take questions, can I just ask um, members present then if, if they have any questions for the applicants or their agent? Uh, Councillor Donnell, you're first. Yeah, it was just to, to come back on what um, uh, Leslie has said there. That that's good to note because obviously it is a, a, a rural site, and um, you know we, we really want to keep in the in with the rest of the houses, and it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb kind of thing, <laughs> if that's the right terminology. But thanks for letting me know on that one. I look forward to seeing what the what that's you come okay. up. With. <laughs> okay, thanks, Councillor. Is there anybody else? wish to ask any questions of the agents or the applicants. I'll just bring in one one thing, Ms. Lindsay, maybe you can answer this one. It just, and it could be that I should have maybe asked Mr. Taylor, but it's just something we've had in a previous experience of another development elsewhere in Angus with new houses being built and a significant number of them. And, um, and there've been four bedroom or three bedroom, some two bedroom houses. Um, I was surprised to read in the report that with, what I think if I understand correctly, the 61 four-bedroom houses, 65 three-bedroom houses, which shout families' houses to me, and yet they were from these 126 houses, there was only 34, an expectation of 34 children, additional children, to actually attend Muirfield Primary School. 126 houses and only 34 children. Does that come from your calculation or is that a council officer calculation? Yes, so that's it probably is going back to Ed's. <laughs> Sorry, it's not our calculation. Um, it's obviously the council that come up with it, the figures based on um, formulated calculations, I assume. Okay, sorry about that, Ed. So no, it's okay. important <laughs> because this is something that's been brought up in one or two of the objections and purely from a common sense point of view to me, this kind of is questionable, shall I say. It may, for, may, it may be a form formula, but realistically, you know, I don't believe people buy four bedroom, three board bedroom homes. Out. They have to think the thought of having children or having a children around. Um, so 34 children out of 126 homes. 
So I'm, I'm frantically uh, going through the developer contributions uh, supplementary guidance, but but my understanding of the situation is um, we have a, a pupil pod product ratio which is established in our guidance. Um, I, 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 I'd be lying if I told you I knew where that came from, but it is something that, that's come forward um, through the supplementary guidance from our education colleagues. Um, so I'll, I'll trust them on that, but this is, this is an established calculation method to establish how many kids are likely to come out. So we have a, a figure for primary education and we have a figure for secondary education education that is an established formula um, that, that that's used in the guidance. Can I, can I just ask Jill, Jill Parsons on the call as well. Jill, can you add anything to that at all? Yeah, so the, the formulas are based on assessing historic trends of school pupils. So um, for a primary school child, it's 0.23 is the factor that's applied. And that's quite similar to local authorities across Scotland. Um, some of local authorities do a variation for um, slightly larger houses that's not something Angus has has done in the past but generally when you assess the historic trends of school roles it's shown to be quite accurate those figures that are coming out from the education authority they do review them um, when they undertake the annual school role forecast and at present the planning authority is doing a bit of work with the education authority on the school role forecast to make sure that those are accurate and as up to date as they can be um, and to do some a bit of work on with them about looking at long-term housing projections feeding into the school role forecast. I think it would be fair to say we've we've not done that as well as we have done in the past. Um, so we want to make sure that that is accurate moving forward. But we're quite content that that people product, well, it's what we call a people product ratio, as Ed mentioned, that it, that is quite accurate in terms of when we look back at historic trends as to how that sits. Okay, thanks for clarification on that. Is it maybe something as time goes on we can, we can look at in a bigger view on these things um, or simply look back back and when things are developed and, and mature and see what the outcome of that is. Okay, um, thanks very much for that both of you. Um, there's, if nobody's got any more questions for Mr Forbes and Miss Lindsay, that's fine. We can move to comments on this application. Is any member willing to or wanting to actually raise any comments? No further comment, no comments at all? OK, um, if that's the case, then I'm going to actually move this planning application for approval. Um, is there anyone wishing to bring an amendment? No. OK, in that case, um, the planning application under this part of the agenda, which I've just lost the part of the agenda, but it's, it's, um, it's report 336 of week 22, 22 is approved. Good evening. Okay, thanks for that. Um, we'll move on to item seven on the agenda, which is report 337 of week 22, which is um, the retrospective planning application of a uh, recycling building at our Downey Quarry in Money Feath. Um, Eddie, anything to yourself? Do you want to kick off with this, please? Thanks again, convener. I'll just pull up the slides. Hopefully you can you can all see that. Um, item seven relates to an application which is partly submitted in retrospect, but the application is for the erection of a recycling shed within a Downey Quarry Money Sheaf. So just by way of background, um, our Downey Neathy Beaton quarries were, were approved planning permission in uh, 2012 um, for, for, uh, for the extraction of hard rock. Um, for the recycling of aggregates and for the batching of concrete. So that planning permission um, allows for the recycling activities which are proposed in this application to take place within the site. And it's important to note at this stage that that application was subject to extensive planning conditions which deal with noise impacts, dust, vibration and blasting sort of impacts, but that part's obviously more associated with the hard rock extraction, but it also regulates um, the hours of operation that activities can take place and the location of vehicle movements. The application we're looking at today relates to a recycling shed, um, which is located, partially constructed in the location of the, the Blue Arrow. So it's in the far northeastern part of the quarry. This is an area which has previously been quarried and has subsequently been infilled. And the applicant has indicated that they've got a need to re relocate their recycling shed, which was previously located in within the quarry void, to this area 
in order to allow the safe extraction of minerals within that quarry void. Um, the, two, the two activities um, can't take place too close to each other for sort of health and safety reasons. But as I say, there is an existing planning permission which allows recycling activities within the quarry, and that planning permission includes a number of controls around about dust, around about um, uh, vehicle movements, and uh, in terms of hours of operation. So the application before us is, is a building which is very much in the style of an agricultural building. It's a building that would be 11 metres high. Um, it would be enclosed on three sides. So the northern elevation, the eastern elevation and the southern elevation of the shed would be enclosed by uh, concrete panels at the lower section and a dark green uh, cladding in the sort of higher sections and on the roof. The application site is, um, is is surrounded by a bund, which also helps to sort of disguise part of the lower sections of the building. Um, as I say, it's located in the northeast part of the site. And, uh, modifications uh, to the building would ensure that it's completely enclosed. Today is a partly constructed building, not the finished, not the finished building, which would which would happen. Mission was granted today. So this is a sort of a drone image um, uh, for all. it shows the, the partially constructed uh, recycling shed. As you can see on the left hand side, you have the quarry void and the building was previously located in the area down to the left, but it's indicated that that isn't a feasible location for it to remain um, due to blasting activities and the sort of safety issues around about that. Um, so the quarry, uh, the, the, the recycling shed would be accessed via the whole road, which runs along the northern end of the quarry and the activities will be contained within the shed. The application is by noise information, which shows that um, activities within the shed can comply with the existing noise limits, which regulate activities within the quarry, including the recycling of aggregates within, within, within this part of the site. This is a photograph of the proposed shed from the whole road, so looking east towards it. As I say, it has very much has an agricultural appearance, but it's it's incomplete, so its impact will reduce once the dark green cladding is 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 applied to the building. This is from the the the, the minor public road which connects Drumsturdy Road to the A92. So looking north to south, you can just about see the shed poking up, but what you can see is that it doesn't particularly uh, unacceptably protrude into the protrude into the landscape there are existing uh, planting features which help it sit down and when the dark green cladding uh, is applied to the building it other agricultural buildings which are a fairly common place in this in this area the proposed building in this slide is is on the left hand side this is taken from the public road between monifeath and new biggin um, and also also draw members' attention to the cluster of buildings on the right-hand side. Um, not particularly visible, but they are very similar uh, they, uh, in scale to, to those proposed in the, uh, the building proposed in the application. There are other agricultural buildings very similar scale already in this surrounding area. So you can see the building uh, just protruding up um, uh, above the quarry in this area. Uh, as I say, impacts associated that would reduce once the cladding is applied to the building and the landscape imposed in the application is also matures. This image is taken from the A92 looking um, towards, sorry, I have a, 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 something interrupted in the slide. Uh, there we go. Uh, from the A92 looking towards the site. Um, so you can see the agricultural building. Um, in this view, you can see it's a sort of back cloth of land form and trees to the rear um, and some in the foreground. As I say, impacts will reduce when the building is applied. And as you can see on the right hand side, there are other agricultural style of buildings in this landscape. They don't look particularly out of place and it's considered from a landscape and visual perspective. This building would not be unacceptable. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, just to recall, the recycling of aggregates is established and it's regulated by the existing planning permission grant granted in 2012. There are a number of conditions attached to that planning permission which regulate impacts. Um, the application is supported by information which shows um, noise uh, associated with activities within the building would not breach existing noise limits. Uh, the building will be largely enclosed, which would ensure things like dust should not be an issue. But there are controls on the existing planning permission, including <clears throat> excuse me, a requirement for the dampening of quarry roads just to ensure that dust impacts are, are, are minimised as far as possible. The building would be removed at the end of the approved 30-year quarry operational lifespan. 
Um, so this is this is an impact that would be uh, also the shed would be required for a relatively limited period um, and the site would be restored as part of the quarrying activities at the end of its operational life. So the application has attracted eight representation raising objections. Um, excuse me. Eight representations which raise objections, but it's considered that impacts associated with activities can be mitigated. As I say, there are conditions regulating the existing recycling operation within the site, and this development would have to comply with those conditions. The application has attracted no uh, objections from consultees. It's considered to comply with planning policy and Scottish planning policy, and on that basis is recommended for a conditional approval. Got any questions for him, for the, for the planning officer? Again, Councillor Fairweather, first the button, off you go. You there, Councillor Fairweather? The muted Councillor Fairweather. Sorry about that, Chair. Um, if you bear with me, I'm not right. I'm not right. I'll be going in a right, uh, right in a few minutes. Um, but I find it I find it incredible, um, and I'll ask Mr. Taylor. Um, uh, this is rep, uh, retrospective. Uh, a, a company the size of Geddes. Um, when did we find out that um, this building was going up, uh, and right, and who decided that they had to ask for planning per permission, which they, they should have done in, right in the first place? Uh, and I'd also like to ask, I mean, right, we're given conditional, it's conditional, and I'm not going to go against this today, uh, can, right, conditional, but I was looking at the policies, uh, and I would possibly say it could be contrary to policies DS3, DS4, and PV6. Mr Taylor, maybe, right, can you elaborate, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor Fairweather. Um, so it's understood that the, the uh, I, I try and remember the, the different parts of your question. So it's understood that um, around 2020, 2021 was a time it's understood that the quarrying, uh, sorry, the shed started to be erected. And as a consequence of observations from third parties, we got in touch with the applicant. Um, the applicants indicated that, that they started to construct the building in this location, mainly because of a confusion, I suppose. Now, when the planning permission was granted in 2012 for the quarrying activities, it was always anticipated that the shed would move. But um, the, the supporting literature uh, submitted in support of that application suggested that would move to locations elsewhere within the quarry void. So there wasn't an agreed position, but it was accepted that the building would move. But obviously, because of what the applicants told us about safety features, that's had to had to move to a more elevated location to the east of the site. So that it wouldn't have required planning permission. It's likely if it was still within the quarry void. So the applicant had just understood that they were allowed to move it. Um, so that that's the explanation from the applicant's perspective of why this has come forward in retrospect. But we've been clear that from our perspective, it, it is a, a development that requires planning permission. And obviously planning legislation allows people to apply in retrospect. The applicant has obviously ceased with our instruction, so they have complied with, with our requirements. And they have submitted an application to try and regularise before going ahead and completing it. OK, that's fine. Thank you. OK. Thanks, Councillor Fairweather. Um, Councillor Clark. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Mr Taylor, uh, just in, in general terms, I am familiar with recycling buildings and, um, and quarrying for that matter. But it does slightly concern me when my colleague there just asks, um, and it was on my mind as well, retrospectively, and you've explained very well, as to why these things happen, and they do happen, and they happen innocently often. But the thing that would concern me is that we really do condition well the restoration of any site, because that's the biggest thing that um, always comes to mind, especially from constituents. Um, they will accept these things if you give them a good reason, but they will want to know for definite absolutely definite that things will be restored. I've got complete faith in you, um, but they'll not necessarily have complete faith in me. So maybe if you could just reassure me. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, thanks for your question. Um, so as part of the 20. 
2012 planning permission that was granted, um, there was restoration plans submitted um, showing that at the end of the operational life of the quarry, the site will be restored. As far as I understand it, we also have a financial guarantee to ensure that happens if it wasn't done voluntarily so that that safeguard exists. Um, but um, yeah, we, we're we totally satisfied that this is something um, that will be removed at the end of the operational life of the quarry. And um, the planning permission that already exists will secure site restoration. And um, that's a really important part of, uh, of the mineral sites, um, sort of at the, at the end of life arrangements. All of those arrangements are already in place and we're proposing planning conditions just to tie this permission back to that uh, 2012 planning permission, which secures all of these things happening. Thank you very much. Satisfied, satisfied that, Councillor Clark, yeah. Okay with that. Okay, um, any other questions from other members? I can't see any hands. Um, we do have um, Willie Booth, who's from Dublish Associates, who's the applicant's agent. Uh, Mr Booth, do you actually wish to address the committee or are you looking to, are you here for any questions they may have? Uh, I'm more here just in case there's any questions. The only uh, couple of points I would like to make was that in uh, Mr. Harris's uh, viewpoint, uh, the photograph for viewpoint 10, that does show the, the shed quite clearly, but that is a view from within the quarry. It's not actually a view from a residential property or from a public access route, so it's not a, a view that you know uh, people would be seeing it to that extent it is much more uh, uh, landscaped and, and shaded than that that indicates uh, and as uh, uh, Mr Taylor also pointed out the site is subject to a financial commitment a restoration bond which does ensure that restoration is carried out completely across the site uh, so I'm happy to answer any other questions but that's all I'd like to say thank you Okay, thanks, Mr. Booth. Um, Councillor Brace has a question for you. Kenny, by the way. Yes, uh, thanks, convener. Um, yes, uh, Councillor Fairweather touched on this earlier the fact that this is a retrospective planning application. And, you know, Geddes Group is a fairly big, very successful company with very able people at the helm. Uh, I wondered if you could maybe explain why this is. Uh, a retrospective application, particularly when Geddes Group have access to planning consultants and agents. Uh, yes, I am the planning consultant. Uh, as Mr Taylor did, did point out, the current planning permission allows for the full operation of a recycling centre and within that planning permission it does allow for the relocation of that shed. The wording uh, within the planning permission and the planning statement went with that was perhaps slightly vague on just exactly where the shed would be and it was anticipated, uh, it simply said it would be within the boundaries of the quarry now. Uh, my client's uh, uh, taken that as being the, the wider quarry because this area where it is, it's actually within the quarry but it's been backfilled as part of the landfill planning permission which raised it up and because it had been raised back up to uh, a more significant level where it would be visible externally, as Mr Taylor said, uh, the planning authority took the opinion that it should actually require planning permission, uh, whereas if it had been lowered down so that it wasn't visible, no planning permission would have been required at all. And that's where the misunderstanding came, just within this visual aspect. OK, thanks. Thanks, Councillor Brays. Um... I don't see any other hands. Is has anyone else got any questions for the applicant's agent? No. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Booth, for your time. Um, we can move to comments. Do Do any of the members present have any comments on this application? No. Okay. I, I'm like other uh, speakers prior. I I'm normally. Oh, sorry, Councillor Brace, you do. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, my, well, my comment um, is that I don't like retrospective applications. They, they show failure, either of the applicant or, or of planning department or of somebody. Um, I don't like them. Um, I, I don't have a particular problem with this at all, this current application in front of us, except 
that it's re retrospective. And I just think that this committee sees far too many retrospective uh, planning applications. Uh, and I would I would say that an awful lot of them seem to be in sort of land-based activities. Uh, and, I, well, applicants shouldn't just assume that we will always grant retrospective planning. Insane. That's all. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Bays. Um, uh, I think I accept what you're saying. I think um, I'm not sure we see quite so many um, retrospective as in, 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 in proportional share of those that aren't retrospective. But like yourself and others, I'm, I'm rather critical of... Um, sorry, I'll, Councillor Feather, you want to come back before you go for your jab? Go on. Yeah, I'm, right, I'm just going to be leaving the chair, but can I just say... Um, ditto with the uh, on, right, on that particular on his particular comments. Thanks. Okay. Right, enjoy the rest of your meeting. Bye bye. Okay. Well, okay, before I carry on, Councillor Durno, you have a point now as well. Yeah, just just a, a quick uh, point to say that uh, on this application, it is good to see that it's actually the site is going to be used for recycling aggregates. Um, because that, that is a good thing for us to be doing um, because the road materials are costing such a lot at the moment and being able to recycle them is a good thing. Thank you. Okay. I'll just finish what I was saying and saying that normally I'd be critical of, of retrospective applications as well, but I do accept what uh, Mr Booth has said here um, in his explanation for, for that. Um, also bearing in mind that the the building um, will be in, in green cladding and really in some of these photographs I've struggled to actually see the building in the photographs and things. So uh, on the basis of that um, I'm going to move uh, this planning application for approval and again just ask the members is there anyone wishing to bring an amendment? No, in that case planning application 21 oblique 00865 pool is approved. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to council officers on all of these. Uh, we'll move to agenda item eight. Uh, eight, nine and ten are all planning appeal decisions really for noting. Um, I don't really expect to require Mr Taylor to actually make any comment on any of these. They're all in your um, the, the actual papers uh, for today. Uh, but we'll move to agenda item eight and first in turn and ask basically has any member got any comments on the decision for, for at the west of Grange, Berry Hill and Brigauri? Councillor Dorn? Sorry, that was an error on my part. Don't have any on that one. These are all just for noting. So no comments, member D. So is, is agenda item eight noted? Noted. Thank you very much. And agenda item nine, which is a planning appeal decision against Kirkwood Homes for the building of houses at, J at Panbride Road, Canusti. Again, as for noting, anybody got any comments they wish to add on that one? No. Is this report noted? Noted. noted. Thank you. And finally, um, plan agenda item 10, which is something similar, planning appeal decision at the field north of Victoria Street, Money Feet is for noting. Do anybody want to bring any comments on that one? No? Okay. Is item 10 noted? Noted. noted. Good. Thank you, everybody. I think that's it, unless I'm missing something, and Sarah will tell me if I am. Otherwise, thanks, everybody, for attending today, and have a enjoyable rest of the day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye now.